Mr. Speaker, I'd like to address an issue that will not affect us until the second half of this century, an issue that I first addressed 23 years ago, the first year of this century. It is the issue of engineered intelligence, the race that the engineers don't know that they're in, a race between the bioengineers and DNA and the computer engineers and artificial intelligence, AI, to create a new level of intelligence on this planet, in effect, to develop our successor species. AI will have dramatic effects in the short term. It will have benefits because it is a powerful tool. It will be used by evil men and women because it is a powerful tool. They will use it to accomplish their goals, and sometimes they will make mistakes. They will invade privacy. They will deny loans to people who should get them for wrong, wrongful reasons. But these are issues that we have faced in the last hundred years, where in this or that technology has invaded our privacy or discriminated against people in this or that financial transaction. My focus is the second half of this century, when we will face issues far beyond that. As to artificial intelligence, Elon Musk and Steve Wozniak and others have asked for a six-month delay. But we will not see a six-month delay in our research. And frankly, a six-month delay wouldn't accomplish much, because the issues surrounding AI are intractable. And we have squandered at least the last 23 years in failing to deal with them. Another six months will do us little good. I want to commend the Speaker of the House of Representatives, and I don't uh, commend uh, Kevin McCarthy all that often, for bringing the entire House together two days ago to focus on the artificial intelligence issue and to hear from professors uh, Toralba and uh, Madri of MIT. The professors uh, showed us that AI clearly has met the Turing test. The Turing test was set forward by Professor Turing many, many decades ago. Professor Turing was in the uh, imitation game, was the subject of the imitation game one of the most brilliant computer professors uh, we have ever had, uh, in, uh, or that uh, the Western world has ever had. And that test was that you would have a text chat with a computer and not be able to tell whether you were talking to a human or to a computer. And at that point, uh, computers would have reached human levels of intelligence. Well, we've clearly got to that level. We call it chat GPT. The chat is right in the name. But today's computers cheat on the Turing test. It's no longer a valid test, because today's computers have something Professor Turing from the 1940s and 1950s could not have imagined, and that is the internet. And they're able to mimic a human response just by looking at every other human response to a, sim a similar uh, statement or, or question by looking at the entire internet. As the MIT professors pointed out, it's kind of like a parrot able to say something that, under some circumstances, uh, might be the right response without understanding the words. But AI will not, therefore, probably be intelligent the way I would view it for decades. We will need a new test, not the Turing test. But for now, AI is a tool. It is a great tool as was writing and fire and jet travel and the internet. And we will be able to deal with that tool. But the second half of this century, we'll see an AI that is intelligent, that has or might very well see this. It may very well be self-aware, aware that it exists and that it exists on a planet that can be affected by things outside of its own existence. An AI may have volition, will, and it may have ambition, the desire to survive, perhaps the desire to propagate, and in any case, a desire to affect the world so as to achieve its own survival. 
AI is a powerful tool. China's not going to stop developing it for the next six months. American corporations see big profits. They're not going to stop develop, developing it. And the private sector isn't going to spend much of its money making sure that AI is trustworthy. They're going to try to make sure that AI is profitable. So we uh, need to be concerned about an AI that is self-aware and ambitious. Such a self, uh, such such a uh, AI, will have um, risks that are beyond the apocalypse to the human race. Therefore, I propose that 10 percent of all the money we spend on AI research be used to prevent and monitor for self-awareness, volition, and ambition and perhaps also to monitor for AI's awareness that we are monitoring it for those purposes. The, uh, if someone, some futurist is describing what the second half of this century will look like and they paint a picture that seems to be a science fiction movie, they might be wrong, they might be right. If, you, if a futurist paints a picture of the future that doesn't look as, like a science fiction movie, you know they're wrong. Our children will be living in a science fiction movie. We just don't know which one. Let us not build Skynet. If you remember the Terminator movies, you'll remember that Skynet destroyed most of the human race just seconds before it thought correctly that it was going to be unplugged. Terminator was a great movie to watch, a terrible movie to live in, and I don't know if we can count on Sarah Connor. The, uh, there are two advantages that the human race has in preventing self-aware and ambitious AI. First, we're designing the AI and we may understand what we're doing while we're doing it. We might. And second, the in machines are intelli inherently, from our experience, not volitional, not ambitious. They'll go to the largest computer and say to the computer, I'm planning to unplug you, break you up, and sell you for parts. And that computer will help you calculate how much money you can get for the parts. Now let's look at genetic engineering, bioengineering. While the largest computer seems fine with being unplugged, the smallest insect does not. Try stepping on a cockroach and see whether it is okay with being unplugged. The DNA, which didn't care whether it survived, didn't care to propagate, didn't and isn't with us. So we may see genetic engineers, DNA engineers, start with human DNA and create a 1,000-pound mammal with a 100-pound brain that's going to beat your kids on the law school admissions test. And that mammal, like every other mammal, may w will probably have a survival instinct. So today's big headlines are about chat GPT and artificial intelligence. Last year's big headline was about CRISPR, a new technology for the DNA engineers to use, and those headlines may turn out to be more important. It will be hard to limit genetic engineering because initially it will help deal with human tragedy. We will use genetic engineering to help cure disease. Genetic engineering will help the impaired human, will help um, to uh, decrease uh, disease or syndromes. The, we will first use, so first we will see us create the non-impaired human the repaired human, and only then will we go forward to the train. There's a second issue, kind of a, 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 a something off to the side, and that is some world leaders, and I'm looking at you at Kim Jong-un, will seek to create submissive or subservient humans genetically. And third, also off to the side, there are animal rights advocates who have argued that animals have reached a point where they deserve constitutional rights. 
Well, when genetic engineers create a pet dog or a working dog with near human intelligence, those animal rights advocates may have a point. So let us return, to, though, to the great race to create transhuman intelligence that is self-aware and ambitious. We need rules regarding genetic engineering uh, that uh, make it plain that uh, we, uh, uh, while it is okay to seek to prevent intellectual disability, it is not okay to use genetic engineering to create intelligence beyond that of the average human. And, of course, we need to prevent the use of genetic engineering to create animals of greater intelligence than that animal species or humans of impaired will or impaired intelligence. We do, we do know, one, know one thing. We know one thing. Intelligence is the most powerful thing on the planet. It is intelligence that gave us fire. It is intelligence that gave us nuclear fusion. It is the intelligence that gives us a uh, uh, unstoppable supply of cat videos on our phone. Last time a new level of intelligence arose on this planet, it is when our ancestors said hello to Neanderthal. Didn't work out well for Neanderthal. So there's a race between the computer engineers and AI, the bioengineers and DNA to develop the next level of intelligence, perhaps to create our successor species. Will the next dominant species on this planet be carbon-based or silicon-based, the product of genetic engineering or the product of computer engineering? Artificial intelligence is in the lead, creating a, an incredible level of intelligence that is useful to us now and is progressing at the speed of computing. But genetic engineering starts with a raw material that has a survival instinct and ambition. I don't know who will win this race. I'm old-fashioned. I'm way rooting for Team Human, which may not even be in the race.